Welcome to Smart Branding, a podcast dedicated to branding, naming, and domain names. I'm Tatiana Bono, and with my guests, we try to help you create and grow strong, memorable, and meaningful brands online. I believe time is one of our most precious assets, and so I want to thank you in advance if you decide to spend the next 30 minutes with us. I promise to do my best to make those worth it. Let's go. So my guest today doesn't need any introduction to anyone involved with domain names, but for Everybody else, um, I have the pleasure to have Mike Mann as a guest. He's a serial entrepreneur, founder of multiple successful corporations, including phone.com, domainmarket.com, seo.com. He's also very active on the uh, social scene. We're going to talk about all of that in a minute. Thank you for making the time, Mike. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Tariana. I appreciate it. Let's start with my classic first question for anybody who doesn't know you. Give me a little bit of a background. Who is Mike Mann and how did you get to do what you do today? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I'm mostly a working man and a family man to the best of my ability. Uh, And I do a lot of charity projects. And, uh, you know, I started out a long time ago. I was in a different line of business. And I had been studying a lot about the future of business and really this theme of internet marketing became very prominent in the business periodicals and things I was reading about. So without any actual skills, one day I decided I was an internet entrepreneur and uh, Mm -hmm. I did a good job hiring really smart young people, software engineers, network engineers, and they've helped me build Different people have helped me build a whole bunch of different companies and charities uh, over the years. So I've been very blessed in that regard. When was that around? If it's not a secret. (laughs) No, it's not a secret. I just have to remember (laughs) around uh, 1986, probably. I I originally started thinking about this stuff and by 88, I had started a company. You know. I'm asking that because um, you, and we're going to talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, you you are very involved with domain names and in the whole you know, domain name world. And that's the reason why I'm bringing up when you started thinking about the internet and internet entrepreneurship, because yeah. um, I feel a lot of people feel like... Um, there's a lot of discussions about oh domain nurse domain name owners they're like just you know they got all those names and it's unfair and and i'm like (laughs) you had no idea what the internet was let alone you know the opportunities that we now take for granted um at the time so those were the people who actually saw that and took a huge risk investing in those names uh and and in your case you just mentioned you were not just buying names you were actually building businesses on the internet yes Uh, and actually i kind of got the dates wrong i started in business in general in 86 but different types of businesses so the internet was more around 94 95 when i started doing internet stuff Um, so first we started a small thing. It's called, it was called an ISP internet service provider connecting uh, small businesses in Washington, DC, mostly law firms onto the internet. And we were fortunate to sell that company to a group that was buying up all the small internet companies and building a national network and national brand called Vario. Um, so I sold that company and then I managed to keep a bunch of domain names that we had for our customers or for potential customers. We were aggregating some great domains, hoping that certain types of customers would, you know, glue onto them and want to build their businesses around those domains. So, you know, again, I probably had like 20 domains at the time I sold internet interstate, one Mm. of which was called menus.com. So one day I was offered $25,000 for menus.com. And I verbally said, yes, I'll take it. And then the next day I was offered 50,000 for the exact same (laughs) name, but you know, I had a verbal agreement. So I actually kept my verbal agreement and sold it for 25. And though I'm sort of regretting it, I wish I had taken the 50, (laughs) but, but in any event, you know, that highlighted the extreme value of these like weird abstract little assets that that time costed us $35 a year to renew them. Hmm. How do you feel has 
that perception of domain names changed over time, like since you started getting involved with them? Uh, the perception? Well, you know, it's a mixed bag. If you're an owner of great domain names, you think positively about it. But, you know, the the people that are trying to register them for their small companies and they realize all the good ones are taken is the expression, which is sort of true in a lot of ways. Um, they have to buy them for their fair market value. And the fair market value is established by a supply and demand and negotiated process. So, you know, other than my side company, accurateappraisals.com, there aren't a lot of ways of figuring out a domain valuation, what the actual fair market value is. So people get very frustrated. They want to buy a domain for 10 bucks and they find out it's actually mm. 10,000 bucks. And they don't have a lot of ways of verifying whether that's a fair price or, you know, they don't know how to deal with it. Mm. So most of them can't even afford it. So it doesn't even matter if it's theoretically a fair price. So leaves a lot of people frustrated. But on the other side, somebody like me who holds on to them for years and years and years, I let the value of the best assets appreciate over time and I can sell them and make some money, hopefully. Mm. I do feel, and I, I wrote about it um, in some article some time ago about, um, I, I feel in a way they, they kind of fell a victim of their own success domain names. Because I do, um, I'm a, a tiny bit younger than you. So when I got into- <laughs> tiny, <laughs> bit. Got, <laughs> tiny bit. Tiny <laughs> bit. When I got into IT in general, actually, one of my first jobs was selling websites. So like we would, we had a call center and we would call people and say, do you want a website or do you want to? And and I saw like in my time, how quickly it went from, uh, do you want a website? Basically trying to convince people to have a website at all, because, you know, some of them didn't have. Like now, I don't think even, you know, a tiny shop on the corner, even if they're super local, they still do have a website, they do have a web presence. Uh, but yeah, I, I witnessed how it went from, do you need a website to, you know, how can you improve your website to all of the social media, like you have to be on and present and, you know, manage all of those. Um, and, you know, even further now, like with content management, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I, I'm like blown away by how domain names have been present since the very beginning, literally of it. Like it, yeah. they made made the internet usable. Otherwise, would be you know we would have to remember all of those numbers, which nobody can. Yeah. But up to date, like you say, you have people going like, "Oh, why can't I have it for ten dollars? And why are they not like free and available?" And it's it's like how how can you not connect the two? Yeah. No, I feel the same way and. You know, it'd be nice if there was some better education of normal marketing people, small business managers, and the general public, because they just don't understand. There actually hmm. is a lot of learning material online. You and me, for example, do a, these videos and uh, blogs and social media, and then, you know, dozens of other people who are experts do as well. So it's actually a lot of good documentation, but for some reason, it hasn't has been as widely dispersed as you would think, because even all these years later, after domains have been popular, you still find most small business people, they just don't understand. They just don't mm. get it. And the ones who do get it generally profit considerably because they take a small business, whatever it happens to be named, and they rename it, giving it a super premium domain name. And the vast majority of the case studies show those people growing exponentially mm. and getting a lot more profits than they ordinarily do. And, and they expect, you don't really see very many bad case studies of people using great domain names. And the worst case scenario is the domain name itself goes up in value anyway. So mm. even if they didn't do a good job on their business for whatever reason, if they bought a great.com domain over time, they keep going up in value. I mean, literally, Every year for the last 20 years, the average sale price of premium.com domain names has gone up. So there's no reason to expect that for the next 20 years, every year it'll keep going up. Mm, absolutely. What you just said, uh, uh, um, a lot of those can be resolved, even if you know the worst thing happens, like the business doesn't succeed, which let's be honest, a lot of startups don't or it gets acquired, merged with some other business, those names they can, in most of the cases, they can be resolved, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, 
you know, also the people are building value, like the domain itself, if you didn't use it would go up in value, but they're building social media around it. If they're building Google links, again, just the domain goes up in value. Hmm. Usually the domain and the business go up in value together, but if for whatever reason, the business isn't catching on, you're still building value into your domain name if you're using it properly. Mm, absolutely. And yeah, to, to go back on what you were saying on the education, and I'm, I'm very happy there are people like you and me and other people that are in the industry and working more and more on educating people. I remember when I got into domain names, now it's coming up to five years, I think, or something. And I think that's indicative in itself as well, because I didn't, I came from an IT kind of a background as well. But I I was giving bad advice on domain names, if I have to be completely honest. You know, I told you oh, really? I started with the, oh yeah, I started with the, you know, uh, selling websites. Then I had my own um, IT software development company and I was giving bad advice to people because I didn't know any better. Right. And the crazy thing is that was like, Oh, my, my son is going to be 19 soon. And he was like two or three when I started. So that's a lot of years. 19. But, you must have been yeah. two or three when you had a baby. <laughs> no, no, I was 20. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but my point is that was some time ago and I, I could say my excuse then I, I didn't was, you know, I didn't know any better about domain names. So, you know, when people came to me about like, oh, let's do this, you know, we have this idea, let's do that piece of software or let's do this website. And the domain name was just like a little thing on the side. It was just like, oh, get whatever, you know, put a, put a dash, like get a dot co or get a whatever. It doesn't matter. Like it really was not a huge consideration at all. Yeah. And when I started getting into the main names and understanding um, all that myself, I was like, wow, like, why isn't everybody like every marketing branding agency person, you know, understanding and learning about that and educating people because yeah. it's just crazy. Um, and the, best you know i got to when talking to um those type of companies one of which you know i had myself before i got into domain names was two things one they don't know any better themselves and the other thing was when you start actually opening the door a little bit and um trying to understand oh, okay you don't know why don't you learn then people look into it and they go hold on a minute like i i'm trying to get money for myself from those people you know, I want to get, you know, 10,000, 15,000 for, you know, whatever marketing job I'm going to do or design job or software development. And you're telling me they have to put, you know, 100,000 in a domain name. It's yeah, like, exactly. No. <laughs> and so it goes into that full crazy circle of people not getting educated about domain names and yeah. even worse, actually getting bad advice. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a couple of points related to that. One is that there's millions of companies that don't have a great domain, but still have a great company. So people try to point those out as case studies, but what they're overlooking and missing is those companies would have even been much more successful had they been building upon a great.com mm. brand name at the same time, particularly if they're a technology or web company, you know, if mm. you're like cutting lawns, you actually can benefit from a great domain, but it's not quite as important because, you know, you're more hands on the street, meeting people and doing labor work. So it's a different scenario, mm. but if you run a technology company, you know, there's overwhelming evidence that a great.com is going to build a lot of value unless you somehow overpaid, um, then it would be a great investment. And again, you could pay a lot of money, that doesn't mean you overpaid. That means it was a it was a great, valuable domain. Like you could buy a domain for a million bucks and say, you know, I think I overpaid. But most cases, that domain is probably worth two or three million. Mm. So in fact, they got a great deal if if that's the case. And then they build upon that great deal. So they're again, they're getting double the value. Is they're getting a great domain at a great price that's going to go up in value every year. Then they're going to build upon it. So they're going to add value to the domain itself while at the same time adding value to their corporation. So there's a mm. multitude of ways of long-term profit upon a great .com brand mm. name. Absolutely. It's, it's just an intrinsic part of the brand. It, it's all there, there is to it. And uh, it, it's funny, you you mentioned some, and I'm, I'm sure because you, you're in the business of, of uh, selling 
um, domain names is brand assets. What you mentioned, it's very funny. I'm sure you've experienced that where people go, oh my God, that's like way overpriced. That's just crazy. They buy the name. If you go up to them, the it's not even the day after, like a few hours after, and you ask them to sell it, how much would they sell it for? Most of the time, I, I think it's like, it's, 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 you know, it's not a question, like how, how am I going to sell it? I'm not going to sell it. It's my name. Yeah. It's my, it's my yeah. business. Yeah. They take a uh, mental ownership of it very quickly and physical ownership, mm. but uh, you know, they get engaged in their improved brand. Their whole company gets into it. Their web developers are happy about being able to build on top of a better brand. Another mm. uh, similar point is that if you look at the fortune 500, these are the 500 biggest corporations in America, 100% of them use .com domains. There's only one slight mm. exception. Google Alphabet uses abc.xyz. The only mm. reason though is because they couldn't buy abc.com because of ABC television. Mm. And the bigger point there is 99.99% of their traffic goes to google.com. It doesn't go to... Mm abc.xyz and they probably regret ever buying abc.xyz considering it's just mm. a stupid brand that nobody remembers but so my point is is we can afford it yeah that's the what we were saying earlier yeah the wealthiest smartest ceos in the world 500 of them 500 out of 500 100 percent use dot com and then they have teams of the world's smartest marketing people, web people, advertising people who are all leveraging .com. None of them are using anything else. So, you know, if the smartest, wealthiest, best people in the world, 500 out of 500 are using it, there's got to be something to that. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I think it's... Um there's been like waves of, of, of things. I mean, I think the... There was like, uh, what's it? Apps are gonna kill the domain names. Like, there's not gonna be everybody's gonna be an app. The domain names don't matter, and that went full circle. There was like so so many things. Like now, now the latest, I guess. Oh, there, there was um about voice. Like people were saying, you know, oh, voice is gonna, you know, nobody gonna is gonna go and type things, and everybody's just gonna say things, and you know, they're gonna. And actually, it's not. It's not just that those things didn't kill domain names. They actually made them more important, each one of them. Yeah, I mean, it didn't work. I've been hearing this since the beginning of time, people trying to invent mm. methods to go around the domains. So, you know, theoretically, people who were upset they couldn't get the .com they wanted tried to invent mm. all these other ideas. I mean, the one thing that has some effect on it is Google. If people go directly to Google and it's a popular company or, or app or whatever, they type in keywords and they can still find it in Google. And that's a legitimate issue. Um, but going directly to a domain where you know what it is, um, is more valuable. Plus, um, if, if you have a better domain, people are more likely to click through it in Google and more likely to buy from it. There's a concept called domain bias in web search. Microsoft mm. Labs did an exhaustive study that proved mathematically that people with better domains were going to make more money, partially because of the memory, but mostly because in Google, people would click on those with better domains and people had a higher propensity to convert into a customer and remember it and refer it to outside parties. So, mm. you know, again, this is a Microsoft lab study. You can look up in Google domain bias in web search. There's exhaustive paper written about it, how they studied it and how they proved that the great domains were going to cause a, a benefit in your profitability. Mm, absolutely. That the, the Google argument actually, and as you said, it's probably one of the like most relevant ones that, yeah, it's true. You know, people go and type something in Google and I've always thought like, yeah, but why as a company would you be you know, banking on that instead of saying, I actually want people not to go and type my name in Google. I want them to go directly to my domain name. Yeah. Like, why would you want to, it, it's, I, I just don't get it. Like, why would you put money into the whole like Google machine instead of saying, no, I, I don't want that. I want people to go directly to me because 
like you would see, and people do that as well. I see that with social media. Like they would literally print their social media handles and put them on places. And like, why are you driving people to a third party? Why not to yeah, your own exactly. website? Like, are you crazy? You know, are you paying to advertise some other company? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to say, oh, you want to find my company, go to Google. Oh, you want to find my company, you know, go to Facebook. You want to give them yeah. your domain name. But the reality of the situation is, Having good search engine optimization, which gets you highly ranked in Google, having a sophisticated or at least good quality social media presence and the domain name all go hand in hand for mm. better branding, better internet marketing, overall better longevity and more com competitiveness for your corporation. Mm. So you really, you want to cover all the bases, but to me, it starts with a great domain name Absolutely. and you build everything out underneath that. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the main thing. And I keep like repeating it in, you know, interviews. So when I talk to people or even like when I talk to people socially, like outside of work, if we get to talk about, you know, their, their brands and their business, but it, it's always that like, I'm, I'm not saying don't do it. You obviously have to do everything and it's tiring and it's a huge job on it. So, and, you know, like covering all of the social networks and which, one, which ones do you need to be on, which ones do you not and how to manage all that and, and the content and the visuals and everything. But like your domain name is like literally where the one place that you can control and the one place where, you know, it should all start and ultimately where you want to drive those people and keep that direct connection with them. And I always give Nike as a good example. I'm sure there are others, but like to, to me, it's a, because I'm like a, fan of their products as well but they do that really really well and they've like i think they've pulled out from like amazon even for similar reasons to that like they they, they want to keep that direct connection with their visitors and yeah of course they have you know presence everywhere but the ultimate goal of everything that they do is to drive you to their website on their mail list on their you know own application where you have like that direct connection with them and they make it enjoyable and uh, like there's benefits to doing it so you don't go through you know third parties to get to them and that's you know to yeah. them that's like more profitable obviously yeah they have a very sophisticated marketing process and uh extensive internet presence. I can still buy um, Nike shoes on Amazon, but I think they go through a third party. They're they not go a, through third parties, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're great uh, role models for, uh, you know, global marketing for sure. Mm, absolutely. What are some um, misconceptions do you feel that like still persist about domain names for entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Well, again, people are pushing, there's always like the the thing of the year, they're pushing different things. Dot AI is the hottest thing. And it's in fact kind of interesting in a lot of ways, but there was already a thousand plus other extensions people could use, dot app, dot web, dot IO. And there was also the old school ones, dot net, dot org, mm. dot info, dot whatever. That AI is particularly cool and it's probably better than almost all the other ones outside of .com, but it's still way below the value of .com. And you'd be crazy to build a global presence on like, you know, whatever, a cool web .ai. First of all, you'd confuse the hell out of 90% of the people. <laughs> but second of all, somebody owns cool web .com, And so they're, the value of their domain and their site is going to increase dramatically. Let's pretend you create this awesome corporation, a ton of traffic, a ton of social media, great product on coolweb.ai, you know, you've just massively enhanced the value of coolweb.com. And those folks could, could have bought coolweb.com assuming it was available. Mostly the cases, again, they're just too cheap and too naive and they wasted all this time and money on an inferior brand and gave somebody like me all this free value because I usually own the .com when they build on those other things, me and my <laughs> competitors, at least, if somebody didn't build a site on it already. Um, so the other thing is, you know, they think AI is exploding. It is really cool. And if you were to buy some of the best ones, whatever .ai, they might be somewhat relevant. But again, it's there's no, no competition ever for .com. And 
if you think about the AI phenomenon, first of all, it's in a bubble. It'll be around forever, but it'll die down. The hype will die down somewhat. And you know, there's millions of companies that will leverage AI for profitability, for their branding, their marketing. That doesn't make them AI companies. Like, can you use mm. the example of Nike? Nike can probably use AI for all kinds of crazy stuff, but they're not an AI company. Nike.ai is massively irrelevant because they use Nike.com. They're a Fortune 500 company. They don't want to dilute their brand, confuse their brand, confuse their users. Then there's mm. the companies that are actually AI companies that provide AI technology services. So let's say, for example, there's 10,000 of them today, 99% of which just started in the last six months. So most of those won't be around in the future. When they're done, there'll be 5,000 of them, maybe let's say at the very most 10,000. But So let's say there's 10,000 AI companies in the long run that provide AI services. So maybe conceptually, they could benefit from a dead .ai domain name, but they can still leverage a .com just as valuably, plus they they could already be using whatever .app or .io or something else. So the point is, is these people who are speculating in .ai, making a big deal about it, trying to convince all their friends to buy them and register them, the entire spectrum of potential clients over the long run is going to be like 10,000 mm. sales. .com already has hundreds of millions out there. And as far as the premium ones, you know, probably five, 10, 20 million. So AI is not competing with .com, even though people online like to pretend it does, it is, mm. it will, it's going to be a big deal, but the math doesn't support it. And the history of all these conceptuals attempting to compete with .com all failed. Mm. Just, it's just not realistic is the bottom line. Mm. Uh, we we had that um we had that sorry for interrupting you be, before I forget my thoughts. We we had the that um podcast for the end of the year. I had a mix of guests and we were talking about the AI craze just in general, not just related to domain names. But uh, there was one comment that was um basically comparing the AI to what cloud was, you know, some years ago. And it's the type of technology that like now it's, you know, everybody's crazy about it, but once it becomes normalized and everybody's used to it, you're not going to want that stuck on your name. You know, yeah. you, I mean, how many companies, you know, that, that are called something cloud, you know, and how many they yeah. were at the peak of it. So, yeah. It's, I think that kind of a thing. they do have a dot cloud extension too, right? Yeah. I think there is yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the point is nobody cares about it. Nobody knows about it. And again, it's back to the general public. 90% of whom are, if you put whatever .ai on your business card, on whatever advertising, they're still going to type .com. They're not going to understand it. And, you know, there's no point in confusing people. Everybody knows what .com is. This, this whole phenomenon, you know, reminds me of when I was a kid in school, we use standard American measurements, you know, mm. like a mile, an ounce, you know, a yard, whatever. And we were told the whole time, well, you know, that's what you're using now, but everything is going to convert over to the metric system. You're going to have to start <laughs> using the metric system. So, you know, here we are 40 years later and uh, nobody in the United States uses the metric system. <laughs> nobody converted. Americans in particular, and probably the whole world are creatures of habit. They're habituated to using .com and all the biggest companies use .com. There's no reason to change and the American mindset's not going to change. People can use other things and some of the customers can be trained to use some of the other things. But there's no rational reason to do so. I think you you actually hit it on the nail just there when you said there's no reason to change because change is difficult. We have so many things to deal with. Like the last thing you want is to, you know, have to remember or think about another thing, especially when it's, you know, usually you're going to a website, it's to either find something that you need or buy something. And in both cases, it's like you don't want to, to you know, spend extra time. And exactly what you just said, the, that like maybe somebody will end up successfully re-educating re people, that costs money. That's, mm -hmm. that, that, that's literally the thing. So whatever it is that you're doing, yeah, probably you can succeed in doing it, but that's going to have a price tag on it. Yeah. And again, people 
are going to complain about the price of coolweb.com. If they can't afford it, it's usually a great investment. Mm. If they can't afford it, they're saying, well, why don't I get coolweb.ai? But the answer there is they should get coolwebai.com <laughs> is a better name than coolweb.ai. And again, you can probably get that one for free or for really cheap uh, mm. if it's a .com. And again, trusting these other registrars to manage your domains in the .ai or .whatever. There's all kinds of shady operators. Oh, that is another thing. Yep, yep, yep. And a lot of the apps and email programs identify all that stuff as spam. So like you're never mm -hmm. going to see the emails from those people. The websites are going to crash. Uh, those people have these weird policies and they change the, you know, you don't know, like, again, I don't know the policies, but just for example, what if the .ai starts costing $1,000 per registration next year? Because mm. there's, there's not a lot of rules, but the .com has a longevity of a rule system and the standard people that operate it. It's still too expensive. There's some amount of corruption in the system, but uh, it's still a much lower risk than any other mm. extension is for your corporate security. So. Mm. That, that goes back to education. That like it's absolutely crazy how people that are successful entrepreneurs that are not even on their first venture. They have zero understanding of domain names to a point where they would build a business, like literally an online business, which means, you know, everything is relying on their domain name and they will get a, I don't know, a dot LY extension without even knowing that's a country extension for Libya. And it goes with everything that, you know, you can imagine that goes with it. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> I didn't even that? know that one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that LY, but I didn't realize it was Libya. Oh, yeah, and and there are they, I've, I've written an article about it about country extensions. I didn't know it uh, until then myself. I was like, oh, that's a you know, because you have like visually or whateverly, you know, it's a ending for many words that in a playful way, and people yeah. had a period of playing with all of those, and it, it, there there are literally like legal restrictions. Even I think it went a bit more um, public, uh, there, there was a bit more publications around it and I'm struggling to remember which website, but there was a website that was on a .ly extension and they had some adult content. Oh, really? And eventually, obviously, you know, with the like legal um, side of it, Libya obviously is a conservative uh, in, in that respect. So there was a point in that which nobody read, you know, when they were buying the domain name that you right. cannot distribute content that would be considered illegal in Libya, that sort right. of thing. So the whole business went out. Um, but that, that, I mean, any country extension is a country extension. Yeah. It's managed and it's governed by that country. So right. yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah, .ai, I'm almost positive, is actually a country extension and not a expanded is, yeah. domain thing. So I think it's mm -hmm. like some island or something. I forgot mm -hmm. exactly, but yeah, apparently they have all sorts of restrictive rules and there's all sorts of risks surrounding that. So again, .com is run by all the major corporations in the world. They all use it. They all leverage the system. They have lawyers to keep it in shape. It's managed under the United States and it's relatively safe compared to anything else. Mm. Absolutely. Let's talk about, like, we can talk about domain names forever, I'm sure. Um, you are, we mentioned at the beginning, very active on the social side of things, charities, uh, and that's not very usual. It's like not everybody does that, uh, not to a huge extent. So tell me a bit more about that. Like, what's, what's the reasoning? How did you get into that? And sure. what are you passionate about on that front? Sure. Well, I was actually in the charity world before I was in the business world. And you know, I worked hands on with homeless people, um, with disadvantaged youth, with all sorts of different things. A lot of it in Washington, D.C., where I'm from. And I was actually always planning on having my life in the charity world. And I still do to a lot of extent. And the thing is, is, uh, you know, so I started running this small business I mentioned a really long time ago called Internet Interstate. And the main purpose of it was, is I needed money you know, to pay my rent, to pay my bills in order to do my charity work because I didn't have any extra money. Um, but when I sold that company, I made like a million bucks and the company sold for a few million, but my share after taxes was around a million bucks. 
and interest rates were at 5%. So at that point I was like, okay, I'm going back to charity work. I'm done with the business world. That was a lot of fun. And I was planning on living on my 5% interest for the rest of my life and doing charity work. Um, but literally the venture capitalist that I sold that company to a gentleman named Justin Joshke, I had a conversation with him. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm retired. I'm going back to charity work. Thanks a lot for my money. Have a nice life. You know? And he's like, look, you know, there's no way you're going to live the rest of your life on a million dollars. You're not going to be able to live like that. You're not going to have enough money to help charity. You're not going to be able to buy a nice house and a nice car. Like it doesn't make any sense. So essentially he convinced me that I'm better off being a businessman and creating more leverage through business, making money through business such that I can create more time and more money to be of greater assistance to the charity world. And that actually turned out to work. I mean, I've worked really hard and really long hours and built lots and lots of companies, taken lots of risk, made a lot of money for a lot of investors, done all sorts of stuff. But all along the way, I've been building charities and donating literally millions of dollars to charities and spending thousands of hours working with charities, building charities, helping charities. So that's been my strategy all along. So as I, as I mentioned, I started being a charity person. I moved into business slightly by accident. And then when I thought I was done with business, I ended up reinforcing it. Now it gets a little confusing because I spend so much time on business that I'm like more of a businessman, which really wasn't my intention. But in any case, I've done both all along. And you can see online, you know, my I've changed around all the different charity stuff I did. At one point I built a charity organization called grassroots.org, which helped thousands of other charities. I helped start a charity in Washington, DC called Bite Back a long time ago that still to this day, you know, 20 years later has a bunch of computer training centers for inner city residents. It helps them with their resumes. It helps them try to get jobs. Very cool, innovative thing we started a long time ago. And and I have this fund called Make Change Trust that you can see online at makechange.com. Also, my website, mikeman.com has links to my businesses, to my charities, to my social media, to my book called Make Millions, which is also at makemillions.com. But in any event, so we have this charity fund now called Make Change Trust. Um, I, I changed the strategy of where we're investing our money and who we're helping and what we're researching. Now I'm 80% focused on small charities in South Florida where I live, people that I can actually meet with and talk to and mm. see the results. I had donated a lot to bigger organizations, but it was harder to track where the money was going. It was harder to communicate with the CEOs or the bosses, chairmen of those organizations. So anyway, the strategy shifted a lot, but I still have a very similar commitment to what I had way back in the beginning. It's mm, wonderful. Something to tie up the two. I do, and you probably get that as well um, when you have people talking to you about domain names. Um, you have sometimes people saying, oh, we, we are a nonprofit, we're a charity, you know, our brand doesn't matter that much. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? Because you have the two hats, you know, you have the person who's working with the charities and also the one that's, you know, working with the domain names yeah. and the brands on the other side. Well, because of my charity work, I actually bought all the best .org domain names, which are <laughs> affiliated with charities a long time ago. But I, you know, I still own most of them. Um, so, I mean, I have the world's very best .org collection right now. And if they're a legitimate charity, you know, we sell them for cheap. I've given some away before. Uh, but, you know, the charities should leverage a .org domain mostly. The problem is it causes a little confusion. The correct answer is they want the .org and the .com. Mm. So, like, for example, if somebody wants homeless.org and homeless.com, I own both of them. They can buy them as a package. If they want philanthropists.com, philanthropist.org, I own both of them. They can buy the package. Mm. Um, but, you know, again, lots of people who run charities are just buying dot coms too. And, you know, if they're a legitimate charity and they show it to us, you know, we always give them big discount once in a while, we give them away for free, but I try not to mix my actual corporate business work too much with my charity work. I'm like, mm. you're a charity. You can apply for a grant through my chair, 
through my charity fund, Make Change Trust. In the meantime, mm. you have to pay cash for this domain name mm. at my corporate entity that is supposed to make a profit. So yeah, it's a good oh, idea yeah. To I mean, I, I, I think it has to. Be, yeah, it, it absolutely has to be. I've, I've had all sorts of. I'm like, um, I mean, I recently moved to Ukraine, which is like everybody's moving out and I moved in, but whatever. And it's funny that, well, it's not funny, but uh, do you know, like I've had, because people look you up when you they talk to you, like when they book a call for a domain name and the number of times I've had people trying to leverage that, like say, oh, and our country is sending whatever to Ukraine. I'm like, really? Like, seriously, you're going to try and bring that up in a conversation <laughs> about a domain name? Like, ouch. You know, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I didn't see so you move there permanently. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't realize. I knew you were there last time I spoke to you, but I didn't realize you moved there. I thought you were just visiting. No, 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 moved. Yeah, been cool. planning it for some time, and yeah. Well, that was so. Again, uh, you know, the last couple of years. Again, we still we do eighty percent of our charity work in South Florida, but the other twenty percent, the last couple of years, have been for Ukraine and Israel, pretty much. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, the world is a it. crazy place. Yeah. Becoming. Yeah. Well, let's try to end up on a positive note. <laughs> what are you looking forward to in 2024? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm not interested in dot AI domain names, but I am interested in <laughs> artificial intelligence and AI. So again, my company domain market has like very extensive um appraisal system, and we have like very sophisticated tools, the best in the world. We have an incredible user interface and we have the greatest ability to understand domain names and understand the value. Therefore, we can buy them and sell them at profitable valuations. So again, we have this endless sets of data and endless user interface applications and really cool stuff we've been building up like for 20 years of just really great tool set, really great data set. But now there's tons of different ways we can leverage AI on top of our data set to do a better job at appraising domains. And again, if you look at the stuff I post, a lot of the good sales I do, I post the prices of the domains and the people always say, how did you get such a high price for such and such domain? And the answer is this like extremely extensive data system we have and user interface we have Nobody else has that. So they don't really have a way of understanding the domain such that we do into the level of detail. So we can take this yeah. insanely cool system we have and put a bunch of AI tools on top of all these sets of data and all this information, and we'll come up with even better domain valuation. So I can use that for buying and selling domains. We're also creating these new landing pages that are SEO Google optimized. So, you know, our domain landing pages are going to get a higher valuation in a higher ranking in Google, more traffic, more ways of understanding our users and converting them into paying customers at a higher price. We're going to use all this on top of the domain auctions to buy more names that are people overlooked or at a better price or to know our limitations better. So, Basically, there's just tons of really cool stuff in AI. A lot of it, we already know what direction we're going. And there's a huge amount of stuff that wasn't invented yet. So we're like mm. watching the inventions and waiting for the inventions and going to start testing and applying stuff that isn't invented yet because people are innovating all over the place. So again, the AI phenomenon is insanely cool. Just the .ai domain names are relatively useless, but... <laughs> they don't relate to whether AI itself is cool. And it's a huge advantage to domain name companies. They figure it out. And again, we're on the very cutting edge of leveraging technology to make money off domain names. So we're going to push through it by adding AI and remain on the cutting edge indefinitely. Very cool. Very cool. And I absolutely agree with you. Uh, that's AI is very, very exciting. And where, where it's going are... Uh, on the valuation, that's funny you mentioned because I was like last year at some point, even before about that, but last year at some point I finished like some formula I was trying to like for myself literally because I, I know as much as you do the problem of like how do I value a domain name? Um, and I think you, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm more um, 
on the like market value of of uh, domains and the data that you have um i was more on the like what is the value of that domain name for the particular company mm-hmm. like for 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 that that business because you know like i don't know like google.com if i had it tomorrow i wouldn't know what to do with it like obviously there's some yeah. value to that name but i would not be able to extract right. it because i'm not google so that sort of a thing i was playing at and i ended up like i started with a little thing and i ended up with like some excel sheet with like 10 tabs and like craziness and i was like that's not that nobody yeah. can use that it's just crazy and now with ai you can actually make that work you can actually plug that into some sort of a um, algorithm that it can manage for you and talk to people in a language they can understand and ask them questions and use that formula without it, you know, just making their head explode. So yeah. that's just amazing. Yeah. AI can uncover a lot of information about the value of the domain. At the end of the day, it needs an expert to look at what the computer generated and make some sense of it. Like my theory is that no matter how great the AI gets in the computer apps, there won't be a replacement for putting a human on at the end of the day Mm. to make sure the value makes sense for a corporation. Absolutely. Um, But, you know, it is extremely confusing and difficult to come up with a valuation. And that's what we see as a strategic advantage. We can do better than anybody else at it. So that leaves our company in a, in a unique position where, you know, we can get the most value of anybody. We can do the best appraisals. We can do the best at the auctions, buying, selling, whatever. And it just leaves us in a good long-term position of making sense of all that confusion. Like the biggest companies in the world, you know, they have domain (laughs) appraisal apps that are absolutely useless. They're Mm -hmm. actually, they're counterproductive because they confuse people and tell them their domain's worth a thousand bucks when it's really worth a hundred thousand or a million. It just, the apps don't work at all. And the humans aren't good enough trained. And even if you have these really smart humans that are okay or good with appraisals, medium good, they don't have the tool sets we have. So without the tools and the data, it's almost impossible to make sense. You could conceptually spend a lot of time studying one domain to try to extract a value. But with our system, we can do a lot of very high quality appraisals relatively quickly. So trying our best. Well, we're going to include links to all of that and the write-up for the podcast so people can reach out to you and check all that out. Thank you so much. That's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Tatiana. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Smart Branding Podcast. Feel free to visit smartbranding.com for more information and reach out if you have any suggestions, questions, ideas, or just want to learn more about how a good domain name strategy can help you build a strong and successful brand. See you next time.